Hello, I'm John Kneebone and welcome to Mainline Baits Carp Fishing TV, where today I'm going to give you a whopping 35 tips to help you with your winter carp fishing. And that's a lot of tips to get through, so let's get started. Okay, I was at a shop open day recently and lots of the questions I would get in were surrounding winter carp fishing. So I thought today I'd just quickly try and put together like a quick vibe version of all 35 winter tips. Starting off with tip number one and a really important one and that is fish with confidence. And what I'm talking about here is that in winter you're undoubtedly going to get to a point where the fishing is going to be a lot lot harder than what it was in the summer. And that's when it's really important to have confidence on your side. So what I mean is if you've got a rig that was working in the summer, keep with that rig. And if you've got a bait that was working for you in the summer, keep with that bait. Because at least when you're on the lake and there's not much happening, the fish are just dormant and there's not a lot that you can actually do, you're not gonna doubt all your fundamental tactics. And that's really important. Tip two crumbed boilies. It ticks the box when we're keeping to our bait confidence and it also means that we're matching the appetite of the fish we can use a little less bait and not forgetting we still got all that food source attraction leaking off our baited area. Tip number three is using paste. It's dead easy to make and I'll leave a link to a video showing you how to do that in the description below. If you don't want to make your own paste you can buy it already made for you in a little frozen tub to match your favorite freezer bait boilies. So if you're already using the link or you're using the cell, then you can buy a little tub of paste to match that boilie. Obviously the paste is nice and soft. You can make it into little hook baits or wrap it around a hook bait, maybe even roll it into small freebies just to catapult a few around your hook bait. It's giving off lots and lots of attraction because it's extremely water soluble, but best of all, you keep that bait confidence going. As we've already said, maintaining your bait confidence through winter is really, really important. And tip number four is a really good way of doing that. And that's using PVA sticks. Perhaps you get to a point where the fish's appetite is so low, you don't want to put whole boilies out into the lake or fish around them. A PVA stick is a good way around that because it's not really giving a lot of feed, but it's giving a whole lot of attraction. And best of all, you can use a stick and bag mix to match your favorite boilie and keep that bait confidence going. Tip number five is using liquids. Like I say, if you get to a point where you really don't want to be putting much food out into the lake, you're still putting out a lot of attraction. Liquids will disperse throughout the water column and pulling those fish in. Now, there's lots of liquids that you can choose. You could use the multi stim It's a very thin liquid, brilliant for winter fishing. It won't be affected by low temperatures at all. You've got the stick mix liquids, particle and pellet syrups, and the hook bait enhancement system dips. Just Glug your hook bait just before casting out and of course there's the smart liquids all proven attractors to keep them winter bites coming tip six is use single hook baits the temptation is always going to be there to put a bit of bait out it makes you feel a little bit more confident sometimes but even if you only start your session with single hook baits you could be onto a real winner you're never quite sure how much the fish are going to feed and sometimes a single hook bait is all that's needed Tip number seven is use a roaming rod. So I'll always have one rod on a single hook bait, but a rod that I'll move around my swim from time to time during my session. Maybe every 20 minutes, half an hour, I'll be reeling that rod in and casting it to a different area of the swim. I'll be watching the water all the time, and if I see a showing fish, I'd certainly be reeling in again and casting at that. And the reason for that is if these fish are dormant and not swimming around much, you could have fish in your swim, but not necessarily close enough to your baited areas or your chosen spots. And casting the rod around is a great way of locating those pockets of fish. Tip number eight is when you're using a roaming rod or you're fishing single hook baits, is fish a high attract, bright hook bait. Something that's gonna be working really, really hard for you giving off lots of attraction both throughout the water column through scent and smell but also visually something that might even get you a bite from a lethargic winter fish out of curiosity tip number nine when you're using a roaming rod single hook baits bright hook bait use the hinge rig and if you'd like to know how to tie that rig i'll leave a link to that video in the description below it's the perfect rig for a roaming rod because 
Nine times out of 10, it will just come to rest a pop-up nicely over the lake bed. Now, you might be casting around your swim and casting into areas where it's unknown to you. You've not markered up or you've not led up and you don't exactly know what the lake bed is gonna be like. If there's a little bit of dead weed still or some silt, whatever it might be, that hinge rig is just gonna come down, lay over that nicely and keep you well presented. Tip number 10 is using bait sprays. It's a brilliant way of pimping up your hook bait, making it supercharged with attraction. And if you are using a roaming rod, fishing a single hook bait, moving it around, you see a fish, you reel it in, there's no reason why, if it's only been in the water 10, 15 minutes, that you'd need to use a fresh hook bait. Just simply dry off that hook bait, give it a few squirts with the bait spray, and it's ready to go again. Tip number 11 is a few different ways of using a high attract hook bait when perhaps you're not confident or you just don't want to use a pop-up or you really don't think that it matches your fishing situation. One great way of doing this is looking at the high impact boily range. We've got 12 mil, 15 mil, and 18 mil balanced wafters available in all those flavors and it includes some really nice highly attractive ones high leakage pineapple essential ib just a couple of those highly attractive nice and bright great for a high attract hook bait but maybe you're a fan of the snowman rig and if you are the quads is a really good way of doing that a nice little bright sighter on top of another little food source bait again a brilliant high attract hook bait and with the snowman rig, you can actually take that attraction one step further. If it is your favorite presentation, is maybe have a look at the little handy packs of response boilies. It means that you could use, say, a strawberry bottom bait with a nice high attract bright pop up on the top. So both hook baits are actually giving off masses of attraction. Okay, now for some basic tips, but there are things that need to be covered when it comes to winter carp fishing. We've tip number 12, and that's wear layers. A lightweight thermal layer against the skin. After that, maybe a t-shirt, hoodie, joggers, salopettes, nice warm coat. It traps lots of air in between all these layers, gonna help keep you warm, and a warm angler is a better angler. Then we're gonna go on to tip number 13, and again, it's using layers, but this time with your bivvy. Use an overwrap or a skull cap and a ground sheet. It locks a layer of air in, around the, above you in your bivvy, will help keep you warm, and that ground sheet just stops any cold air coming up through the ground. And talking of cold air coming up through the ground, I'm then gonna to talk to you about tip number 14. When you unpack your luggage, you take your rods out of your rod bag, fold that rod bag over, put it under your bed chair. And trust me, that'll keep you that little bit warm in the winter. And it's not left outside to get soaking wet in the rain and be twice the weight when you want to barrow it back. And lastly, when it comes to these type of tips, I'm gonna to talk to you about when your gas bottle is getting low and you just can't seem to get that last bit of gas out of the bottle. So tip number 15, is just put a small saucepan on your stove while it's only gently spluttering away, trying to use up this last bit of gas. About an inch of water in there. Just let that water warm, it's, you don't need to get it hot. Put that on the ground, stand your gas bottle in that warm water and you'll be able to use every last bit of that gas bottle. But full disclosure here, I'm not telling anybody to heat up their gas bottles or anything like that. Just a little bit of warm water that you stand your gas bottle in and you'll be fine. And once you're nice and warm and comfortable on the bank, both day and night, we can move on to tip number 16, and that's maybe setting your alarm to get up in the night and just have a little listen, half an hour, an hour or so, for showing fish. Fish, winter fish, very, very dormant, but they do have a habit of revealing their location in the middle of the night with a few jumps out of the water. You can listen for those splashes, perhaps even see ripples coming in on a calm night. But Tip number 16, listen for showing fish at night. And talking of night fishing, we got tip 17, zig rigs. Through the winter, especially January, February, those last couple of months of winter, zigs in the mid layers, maybe lower layers, can be very, very effective during the winter spell. So don't ignore zigs in the winter time. Now I'd love to be able to tell you exactly why zigs work so well at night during the winter, but for scientific reasons, I'm not a scientist, I don't know. I'm an angler and all I can tell you is from my own experience is that nighttime during the winter can be a really good time for fishing zigs. 
Whereas first light can still be a good time for fishing rigs down on the deck. So I'd probably be looking to set my alarm again just before first light, maybe reel those zigs in and change over to a presentation down on the deck. A solid PVA bag would be really good for a one cast presentation. There's lots of different theories about why fish in the winter can be up in the upper layers, but then more towards the bottom through the day. And my own opinion is, is that the, the, the air pressure probably has a different effect on fish during the winter when there's less light levels, there's the water is obviously colder and the time that their swim bladder perhaps or things like this allow the fish to feed actually on the bottom is probably shorter um, and just more variable to what it is in the warmer months. Tip number 18, plan for better times ahead. If the weather is cold, wet, miserable and you really don't feel like going out on the bank and doing a whole session doesn't mean you can't still be fishing in a way. And what I'd be doing is, like I say, I'd be planning ahead. I'd be looking at the lake that I'm potentially gonna be fishing in the spring. I'd be just taking a few walks around, noting any visual features. And that leads me on to tip 19, which is mapping out lakes, the lake bed, the topography of the lake bed during the winter. The banks are often very quiet. Sometimes you can even turn up to a lake and there's nobody there. And it's the perfect time to go in all the likely looking swims, chuck a marker float out, make records of the depths, the type of bottom, all the things that you want to know when it comes to springtime. This leads nicely on to tip number 20, which is introduce a food source bait. So if you are visiting a lake through the winter that you know you're gonna be fishing in spring, and you're looking at these features, perhaps mapping out the lake, while you're there, start introducing a few food source boilies. It doesn't need to be a lot. My favorite method is to actually just put five or six boilies in little spots between swims that you know fish are gonna pass. So you're not baiting up in swims because those are potentially danger areas to the fish. What I'm looking to do is just have a little mouthful there just so that the fish can eat them freely in a safe area of the lake move around, perhaps they find another little patch of 10 or 12 boilies, eat them, and what that's doing is growing their confidence in that bait all the time. The result is when you get to springtime, when those fish come across that bait, they recognize it as a safe meal and they should eat it more readily. And tip number 21 is again, utilizing this time through winter where you might not be on the bank, but you still wanna get that carp fishing fix. And that's making yourself some hook baits, again, ready for spring. So if you're looking to make your own wafters or pop-ups with custom flavors that are unique to you, perhaps a custom color just to be that different to everybody else, winter time is the perfect time to be doing this. And if you wanna see some videos on how to make your own hook baits, wafters, I think we made some Bonoffi wafters. I'll leave a link to those videos in the description below. Tip number 22 follows the bait making theme, but this time, rather than making your hook baits, maybe make yourself a nice big batch of boilies. If you was to make a couple of kilos of boilies every weekend through the winter, your freezer could be well stocked, ready for spring. And again, you're just utilizing this time, you're keeping that carpy fix going. And I know myself that when I do little jobs like this, maybe even respawn my reels through winter, it just keeps that enthusiasm going. Now, I'm not gonna kid anybody, Making your own boilies, it can be time consuming. It is a lot easier to go to your tackle shop and pick up your boilies ready rolled. But there is a little quicker way of doing that and that's making spod mix boilies. And these are really good in the winter and going into spring because they're not a fully boiled boilie. They're a lot quicker to make, but the resulting boilie is different in its texture, but fundamentally it's a lot softer. And that can be a really good element to have within your bait at this time of year. Again, if you're interested in making this type of boilie, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. They say that failing to prepare is preparing to fail. If you wanna cross off that element a little bit, but maybe you don't wanna make your own hook baits or your own boilies through winter, there's no reason why you still can't prepare some hook baits ready for springtime. What I'm talking about here is maybe getting your pop-ups, adding some bait spray or a flavor just so that they soak up some extra attraction. You could do that every week or so through the winter, just keep boosting that attraction level up. And then when it comes to your bottom baits, you could air dry some bottom bait boilies straight out of the freezer bait bag. 
add them to a tub and then add the hook bait enhancement system and what that'll do is it will harden up those hook baits it will also boost their attraction but make them super durable for your springtime fishing tip 24 when you're carping in the winter you've got a lot of things against you so fish a high stock water somewhere where you're always going to be in with a chance of a few runs and if you are experimenting with a few things ahead of spring again a high stock water that's a good place to go get some feedback on the type of tactics you're thinking of using when that weather gets better again and that leads on to tip number 25 if the weather is pretty cold miserable the banks are a bit muddy you don't fancy being out all night then just fish day sessions again there's plenty of high stock waters around where a day session can throw a couple of bites and keep that carpy spirit going tip number 26 pay close attention to the weather forecast in my experience it's not always the mild weather that can bring on winter bites it's more that you're looking for a consistent spell of weather the worst conditions for me when i'm well i guess when i'm least confident is when during the day i'm going from a, a cold wind to a bright sunshine back to cloud and the weather is just all over the place whereas i feel that even if it's really cold if the weather is consistent throughout two three days then the fish are adjusted to that and you've got a much better chance of catching so look for those consistent spells of weather whatever those conditions might be tip number 27 is another one where the weather is concerned or conditions when you get to the lake and just something that i always do and i try and remember to do and that's try to remember to make a conscious note of how the weather conditions hit you when you get out of your motor when you arrive at your venue chances are you've drove all the way to that lake with the heater on in the winter when you get out of the car or out of the van try and just consciously be absorbing what the weather is doing if you're hit straight away by a cold wind or a cold temperature perhaps you're thinking you need to be on the back of the wind that's where the carp might be more comfortable if you get jump out of your out of your vehicle and you think well you know what it's quite mild this this isn't too bad you could be looking on the end of the wind and it just i find gives you a good place to start thinking about a where you should look for fish and b if you should just start fishing one thing that will probably happen in the winter is that the water will clear in fact it will go gin clear in a lot of lakes and that can make things a little tricky when it comes to terminal tackle disguising your hook link your rigs things like that so one thing that i would look to do when i go into my winter fishing is use fluorocarbon especially on the hook link maybe on the main line as well if those fish aren't active and you're just hoping on that one special bite in the winter put things in your favor a nice clear fluorocarbon hook link and like i say maybe a main line as well leading on from tip 28 into tip 29 if that water has gone gin clear and it's that little bit more difficult to sort of disguise your presentation it can be a good idea to start thinking about scaling things down a little bit scaling down your hook size your hook bait and your feed just to give yourself a little bit of an extra chance when it comes to not spooking the fish and getting those winter bites tip number 30 is taking a look at the mainline match range it's a great way of scaling your presentation down and there's lots of products that really lend themselves well to winter fishing one of which is expander pellets they're very easy to prepare we've got a video showing you how to do this and i'll leave a link to that video in the description below you can prepare these pellets just with a little bit of water for a couple of minutes while you're on the bank and what will happen is those pellets will soak up that moisture but and go softer in texture they'll be more digestible which is going to be an easy meal for the fish in winter when their metabolism is low and like i say it's really easy to do it's one of those little edges that you can take from the matchmen for your winter fishing tip number 31 is using another product from the mainline match range and that's the colorants these colorants are perfect for coloring up your pellets say the expander pellets that we've already mentioned because everybody's going to be using a biscuit colored pellet being able to give your pellet a nice bright yellow or a bright red color even a bright green it's just something a little bit different it's gonna stand out and it could just get you a few extra winter bites and moving on to tip number 32 is again using the colorants 
but this time in conjunction with a classic winter bait, and that's maggots. Anybody using maggots through the winter, in the main, they're gonna be using unflavored white or red maggots. Being able to use these colorants, which are also flavored, is gonna be able to change everything when it comes to your maggots. It's very easy to do, and again, we've got videos showing you how to do this that'll be in the description below. Tip number 33 is another tip for your maggots and actually comes from one of the Mainline Match team members and that's Darren Cox, where he likes to just take just a few maggots that he's gonna be using for hook baits or you could perhaps use for just what you might put into a mesh bag around your hook bait. So not the overall feed, just what's gonna be directly around your hook. And that's using the bait sprays. Brilliant for flavoring up your maggots. And again, supercharging the attraction of your winter baits. Tip number 34 concerns another classic winter bait and that's sweet corn. Sweet corn is very watery, soft, mushy, quite easily digested by fish during the winter, and it's already got that visual stimulus in a nice bright yellow color. But that attraction can be taken even further by adding a liquid, and the particle and pellet syrups are perfect for this. So if you want a pineapple or a coconut, or even the lovely essential IB flavor infused within your sweet corn, just take a look at the particle and pellet syrups Again, it's a very easy thing to do. Add your sweet corn to a, a little bucket or a plastic bag, give it a good even coating of the liquid, roll it all around so it's got an even coating and you'll have a supercharged sweet corn presentation to pull those carp in. And finally, moving on to tip number 35. If you're finding that you're not on the bank quite so much this winter, but you're looking for something to give you that carpy fix, then make sure that you look through our extensive list of rig tying videos, find one you like, get lots of rigs tied up and get that rig board fully loaded, ready for spring. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that notification button so you know when our next video is coming out. If you don't already subscribe to the channel, then please hit that subscription button below. And for more videos that I think you might like to watch, I'll leave links to those here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.